Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Jackie Ose. I am the Associate for Scholarship Selection here at the Jack and Cook Foundation. Welcome to the webinar on the 2019-2020 College Scholarship Application Process. Um, again, earlier I asked if anybody had any questions to enter them into the question box on the side. Please feel free to do that throughout the webinar and I will do my best to answer your questions. If I do not get to your question, I will answer them at the end. All right, so the 2019-2020 College Scholarship, the Cook College Scholarship, is the scholarship that we offer to support high achieving high school students attending competitive four year colleges and universities. So let me just give you a little bit of a background about who our Cook scholars are. So typically about 93% of the scholars that we accept are um, attending highly competitive colleges or universities in the uh, following fall. Typically they have an unweighted GPA during high school of a 3.86. Now in our application, we do not require 3.86, we require 3.5, but this is just what a typical profile of a Cook Scholar looks like. And one of the most important things that we look at as well is civic and community service during high school. And most of the scholars, about 83% of scholars that we accept, do give back in those forms. So our scholarship offers up to $40,000 per year for students to attend an accredited college or university of their choice. So this money can be applied towards anything under the cost of attendance, which includes things like tuition, living expenses, books, and other fees. Um, this is a last dollar scholarship, meaning that financial aid from your college or university will be applied before the Cook College Scholarship. For many of our students, financial aid at their institutions covers half, if not foundation comes in to cover the rest. So that's the monetary portion. Along with that, you'll also receive personalized advising about co selecting college, transitioning, and then maximizing your college experience. So you'll have a one-on-one -on -one advisor with you throughout your college experience. Um, you'll actually typically have two, one in the first couple years for your transition, and then the last ones uh, in your last two years um, for moving on after college. What are your after college plans? Would you like to go to graduate school? Would you like to go to a professional degree? Um, would you like to go uh, into the job market? So those are a little bit of the things that we offer. What we want you to do in our program, in the Cook College Scholarship Program, we want you to attend the nation's best four-year colleges and universities. Access to those colleges and universities is very important for us. We want you to be able to gain skills, networks, knowledge, and confidence to excel in college. So that's where our advisors are coming in. They're there to help you succeed. We have a wonderful network, so we want you to connect with peers and mentors who support that academic success and the development of your expertise. And we want you to get prepared for postgraduate opportunities. So like I said, that's where you're going to be advised on your career and or graduate school goals. So overall, the scholarship is, not, is more um, than just the monetary award. It's the full program intended to ensure student success. This includes encouraging you to do all four of these things. Last year, the top five most attended universities for our incoming College Scholar cohort were Harvard, Stanford, Princeton, MIT, and Swarthmore College. This is a little fun fact of where our scholars are. So a little bit more about the educational advisor. What they will do is they'll conduct regular check-ins and make campus visits to see you. Um, they're also going to help you navigate campus resources. So we highly encourage all of our scholars to look into graduate school. The educational advisor is important in providing resources to ensure that graduate school is an option. And one of the ways to get there is to make sure that you are utilizing all of your campus resources um, that are available to you. So our educational advisors are um, staff members who will be able to help you maximize that. We want you to also, again, along with our program goals, to connect with mentors, internships, and fellowship opportunities as well. 
So most graduate school applications and even just the job market itself require you to have certain um, experiences to be a competitive applicant for um, your future goals. So this is a way that we can get you connected, our advisors, our Cook um, alumni group can get you connected to some mentors, some internships, for example, some labs, um, any uh, research professor that might align with your interests, and any fellowships and summer opportunities that you might be able to engage with as well. We, um, as an educational advising team, we also create academic support plans for you, individual to your needs and your goals. And again, we support you in the graduate school application process, the nitty gritty of what to submit, who to ask for recommendations from, um, prepping for that graduate school process. So our scholarship network is fantastic. Our Cook Scholars attend colleges and universities spanning the country and the globe. We have about 2,500 Cook Scholars and alumni right now. Um, each year, our scholars are invited to an annual Scholars Weekend event in Virginia, um, which it's a, it's a unique scholarship event that nearly 300 of our scholars attend every year. Um, this weekend is, it's an all expenses paid conference where scholars can meet one another and participate in daily programming uh, intended to boost career and college success. Some of the sessions are um, resume workshops, mock interviews and internship search tips. So that's a really great way to start your connections throughout the Cook Scholar community and the network. And furthermore, even though it's not just about the money, um, we do also offer exclusive eligibility to apply for graduate school funding through being a Cook Scholar. So nobody other than Cook Scholars and undergraduate transfer scholars are eligible to apply for the graduate school funding. Um, so that's really nice. Um, we, the exposure to thriving network of Cook Scholar alumni um, is also really helpful, helpful for that college and career guidance. Um, our alumni network is very vast and that also includes a network of graduates, of Cook graduate scholarships. Um, so we typically pull in all of our resources from all of our scholarship applicants, and um, this is a really great way to connect with people who might be in your field and who might have the same similar interests as you. This graduate award is only available to Cook Scholars and provides $75,000 per year to pursue a graduate degree. Okay. So that's a little bit about the Cook Scholarship Program. This is the eligibility where we need to make sure everyone understands the base eligibility requirements in order for you to apply. We receive about six to 7,000 applications each year, and we wanna make sure that you are going to be considered because you have met these eligibility requirements. So we don't want anybody to waste any time filling out extensive application processes just to not meet the eligibility requirements. So what that means is to be eligible for the Cook College Scholarship, you need to be graduating from a US high school in spring of 2020. So you should be a high school senior right now, graduating in the spring. You will need to plan to enroll in a four-year college or university in fall of 2020, so next fall, exactly a year from now. And you'll need a cumulative unweighted GPA of 3.5 or above, an SAT score of 1200 or above, or an ACT score of 26 or above. And these are the super scored and composite scores. So we do take those into consideration. And you'll need to demonstrate unmet financial need. We'll go into a little bit more about the financials later, but typically this means that your estimated family contribution needs to be less than $95,000 per year. And we'll talk about that later as well. So we expect, found, we expect the Cook Scholars in our, at our foundation to maintain that strong academic record through appropriately challenging course load. Um, we want you to act with honesty and personal integrity. We want you to demonstrate character and leadership. We want you to be concerned about and engaged in your community. And we want you to maintain a good disciplinary record. 
So if you meet those eligibility requirements and you are absolutely down with getting involved with a foundation that expects these things, you are absolutely welcome to apply. Okay, so the one way that we accept applications is through Common App. We are a Common App member and we will only be using Common App this year for college scholarship applications. So we do not accept any emailed or mailed um, or any application through an outside source other than Common App. So a uh, little bit of nitty gritty of how to apply. You'll need to um, create a Common App account. You'll need to add Jack and Cook Foundation as one of your colleges. And you'll need to complete the, rec the requirements just like any other colleges that have other um, supplemental requirements. So it, it'll act as if you are applying to another college, but you're just applying to our scholarship. Okay. So um, if any young scholars are listening as well, your Cook Foundation educational advisor is going to be added in that same section as well. Okay, so when you uh, create that account, the just make sure that your Common App is not indicating that you are a transfer student. You want to make sure that you click on the first year student. So on that left picture, make sure that you click on first year student. And then when you sign in, make sure that it is an email that you are going to be using for all other colleges and something that you are going to remember. This is very important. Okay, so this is how you're going to add the Jack and Cook Foundation. Just search for it as if you would any other college, um, University of Hawaii, and then you can also search for Jack and Cook Foundation. Click on us, we will be listed there. And then you'll see that we will be listed under My Colleges, and that's where you can look at our supplemental information. Okay, so our requirements are very similar to the Common App requirements. They will not ask you to repeat information, but this is a list of the information that we will be requesting from you. Um, just some clarification questions about your eligibility, some things about your finances, um, your recommendations. You'll need two academic recommendations from teachers, professors, people you've worked with in academic environments, contacts, family, activities and honors. These are things that you've done during your high school career. What your college plans are, that's the colleges that you intend to apply to. We just ask for your top three and then for you to explain why these are your top three. And then we have a couple writing um, prompts, which I will talk about later, and then waivers and conditions. Okay, so here are the writing requirements for the Cook, Scholar, uh, Cook College Scholarship. These are just copied and pasted from the Common App. So nothing new here. Once you go into the Common App, these prompts will be right there above the text box where you can enter your essay. Just keep in mind that these are limited to about 100 words, which is typically 600 characters. So make sure that you are keeping your answers relatively brief and make sure that you answer all of the questions in order to submit your application. Okay, so some of the um, Additional portions, there are some other text box. They're not technically considered essays, but they are prompts in order for you to just give us a little bit more information about your plans, your goals, and about you as a person. So under the financial section, there is a, a portion where you can explain any special circumstances that you want us to consider when we review your um, estimated annual income. Typically, these fall along the lines of business losses, extraordinary family medical expenses, um, expenses for disabled children, really anything that has affected your family's uh, financial uh, abilities. So feel free to enter that there. That is also going to be a, a brief explanation. It's typically about 100 words as well. You'll explain to us, like I said before, how you selected those four-year colleges. You'll tell us about your majors and minors, whatever you plan to be involved in. And you'll tell us about your future career plans. Again, these are very short, typically about 100 words as well. Um, so don't feel like you need to write an essay for each of these. It's just for us to get a better look at what you are interested in so that our advising team can help you as best as they can. So on this webinar, you will receive a recording afterwards and you'll be able to click on these links. 
um, and they are really great Common App resources. Um, the expert tip videos are very helpful if you're running into any issues in Common App specifically, um, especially on the Common App portions and on the JKCF specific supplemental requirements. So feel free to click on any of those. And just as a big picture timeline, our application opened on August 1st, this past fall. We are closing the application on November 13th, 2019. So that gives you about six weeks to complete the application. Our semifinalists are going to be announced in January of 2020. And then recipients will be announced in April of 2020. So you should find out before you need to make decisions to to colleges, which typically ask for about May 1st notifications. We're doing our very best to make sure that this is an April, beginning of April announcement, um, but that is most likely gonna happen around April. Okay, so anything you have, any questions you have, any issues you have um, about the Common Application itself need to go to um, App Support, a Common App. We do not have any control over Common App itself. You'll need to contact them directly if you're having specific issues there. If you're having eligibility questions or questions about what the program offers, please, please, please email your questions to scholarships at jkcf.org. If you have a very specific question, we welcome those because then we can give you specific feedback about your um, situation. So please feel free to contact us there. And now I'll go over a little bit of the frequently asked questions. So these are things I'm going to go over first, and then I'll take a little look at the questions that you've asked in the um, in the questions box. But typically, students will ask us if they need to submit official transcripts. And the answer is yes. However, you specifically, as the applicant will not, your high school counselor will submit official transcripts through Common App on your behalf. So you should not be touching official transcripts, your high school counselor will be. Do I need to take both the SAT and the ACT to be eligible to apply? So no, you don't need to take both, you just need to take one or the other. We do consider super scores, so if you have a super score of 1200 or higher on the SAT, or a composite score of 26 or higher on the ACT, then you meet the eligibility requirements there. So letters of recommendation, we require two letters of recommendation, one of which should be from a teacher you had in an 11th grade core academic subject. Examples of that might be English language arts, math, social studies, history, uh, science, or a foreign language. Uh, we require another letter from another academic um, advisor or um, professor or mentor that you've worked closely with. Now these recommenders should be people who know your character and know your academic prowess because they are going to be um, explaining that to us. So they're the ones that are going to give us the holistic picture of how you are as a student. Now just to clarify on the 11th grade core academic subject, the reason we do that is because right now you're in 12th grade and you've only had teachers for two, three months maybe. So right now, those teachers that you have at this very moment are not going to be able to give a holistic year-round view. The teachers you had last year might be the best to remember how you are as a student and how you have been over the entire year. So that's why we ask for 11th grade and not for teachers right now. As your second recommendation letter, feel free to ask any teachers that you have at this very moment. That's fa totally fine. If you have questions about the specific recommenders that you um, have in mind, please send us an email, scholarships at jkcf.org, and we can answer your specific questions as well. Okay, so some colleges that you apply to don't use Common App. So there are some cases where students have never been intro introduced to Common App and don't use it in their general uh, college application process. That's okay. You will still need to complete an uh, a create an account through Common App in order to submit the Cook College Scholarship. So even if you're not applying to any other colleges and universities through Common App, you'll still need to create the, app, uh, the account and submit the application through Common App. 
So we can't get around that. And we can't go through any other application portals. Okay, so like I said earlier, our typical um, financial need number, our cap is typically about $95,000. If you are for some reason over that um, due to unusual circumstances, and you know that day to day your family does not operate on an annual family income of about $95,000, you'll have an opportunity to explain that in one of the text boxes. So we are asking for you to estimate your annual income for 2018, 2017, and 2016, the past three years. And if you are above that 95,000, you'll need to let us know why. The financial portion of this scholarship is not um, evaluated until you are selected as a semifinalist. So at this point, the only thing that you'll need to include as um, financial verification is a text box um, where you'll enter in, let's say your family makes $50,000 a year, you'll enter in 50000. And that's all we ask for for now in the Common App. If you are selected to the semifinalist um, position and you get notified in January, we will ask you to submit financial verification documents um, and tax documents. But that is not something to worry about now. It's just something to think about and to know that you'll most likely need to collect that. Um, in January, should you be selected as a semifinalist. Um, so if your family did not file taxes, US taxes for any of those three years, in the finances section, you'll also um, need to just type in your estimated family income and then provide that brief explanation. So for example, if your um, family does not have a citizenship status that um, allows them to file US taxes, or whatever reason it might be. If you didn't file US taxes, there are other things that you can provide to us to verify your finances. Again, that will not be requested until January if you were selected as a semifinalist. So here, you're just gonna estimate your family income um, in those text boxes. And again, you do not need to be a US citizen to apply to the Cook College Scholarship Program. In any of our applications, for our scholarships, you do not need to be a US citizen. If you would like to disclose your citizenship status in your personal statement or in any of the essays, just know that your information is not going to be shared outside of the foundation. So feel free to include any of that as special circumstances or something that you um, feel is necessary to share to explain your story. So that information is going to be kept private. So at this time, I am going to take a look at the questions in the sidebar and choose a couple to answer. So if you have any questions of anything that I've said so far, please make sure that you will enter, you enter something into the questions section. Um, I'll also actually take a minute, I'm looking at some right here, I'll take a minute to explain the selection process. So after you submit your applications to us in November, we take the applications to a committee-based review system. So um, two people will sit down and review your application holistically. So they, they aren't looking at one thing specifically. They are looking at the entire application as a whole within the context of your hometown, your high school, um, and your experiences. So to answer somebody's question about what is most important, it's actually holistically reviewed. It is not, we're not looking, we're not screening for SAT scores, for example, first. We're looking at your whole application first. Then after that, um, it will go to an internal review system, and then we will announce semifinalists. We'll then do the financial review portion, um, and then we will uh, notify those who might need an interview with our uh, internal review. Uh, typically those are Skype or phone calls, so there's no travel involved. And then we'll typically make our notifications after um, our executive director reviews, and that will happen again in April, you'll be notified. Okay. So can a psychology teacher be able to submit a recommendation for me? 
So that is not a core academic subject at this point. That is typically considered an elective. So make sure that you have a core academic subject and that psychology teacher can be your second academic recommendation, absolutely. But make sure you also include an academic. So again, despite the student's strengths, in other aspects in their academic career. If the student's SAT score is below 1200, are they automatically disqualified? So no, again, not automatically disqualified. We are looking at the holistic um, view. Just remember that we are, we are fielding thousands of applications and those that meet all of the eligibility requirements will obviously be um, in higher standing than those who do not meet all of the eligibility requirements. So be mindful of applying and when you are thinking about your eligibility requirements. If one of those is not met, but you feel that you still have a strong application outside of that, take into consideration what that might mean in consideration of the um, other thousands of applications that we are receiving. To give you an idea, we typically award about 100, and 100 to 100 and 30 applications, um, I'm sorry, we, we typically accept 100 to 130 scholars for the Cook College Scholarship program each year. So it is a very competitive process. Um, and you just wanna make sure that your application does meet all of the eligibility requirements to maintain competitive in that competitive process. Can you use your college recommendation letters? Yes. Um, they will be, you'll enter an email um, for the person that you would like to be your recommender. If they have already written a college recommendation letter for you, that's fine. You can um, email them and they will upload it as well. Just another notification here, your recommendation letters from your advisors, from your counselors, from your core academic teachers, those do need to be completed by November 13th. So even if you've asked for a recommendation letter, they need to be submitted by the teacher or the academic person. They need to be submitted by November 13th, by that deadline as well. Okay, let me just look through a couple more of these. Can I send both my SAT and ACT scores in? Yes, you may. Um, they will be self-reported both on your um, common app portion and the JKCF supplemental portion. Are there any restrictions to schools? Is there a list of schools you are willing to cover? So you can elect to attend any accredited four-year university or college. There's no restrictions other than that accreditation. So if you'd like to go to the University of Edinburgh, that's fine. Um, we are more than happy to do that. You, the only U.S. requirement is that you're currently attending a U.S. Um, high school. So there are no other restrictions there other than making sure that they are an accredited um, university or college. Are candidates often selected whose family is above the median income? So typically, um, the, the median income of the past scholarship um, the group of scholars, cohort of scholars, was around $30,000. So just to give you an idea of the family situations that those that receive the scholarship are coming from, they're typically a lot lower than the $95,000. So most of the applications, um, not most of the applications we receive, but the applications that we receive um, and those that we accept, the median is around that $30,000 to $35,000. So again, if you are above $95,000, feel free to explain to us why that might be. If you're below 95,000, don't feel the need to explain to us. You are meeting the technical requirements of having some sort of financial need. So you still do meet those eligibility requirements. Okay, along with the application, what else do we have to submit before the deadline? So the application through Common App is only complete if you have the, um, recommendation letters, your two recommendation letters. If you have submitted both the Common App's um, personal statement and the three questions that we ask in our supplemental area, 
And as long as both the com common app section and the JKCF supplemental section, each of those questions is answered, you will be able to submit. Through Common App right now, there is no way to go back into your application after you've submitted it to JKCF. You may submit to JKCF and still have outstanding college applications available, but for our section, once you submit, you may not go back and edit our application. If for some reason there is a glaring mistake, like you accidentally added another zero on your AGI, your adjusted gross income, feel free to email us and we will enter that into your um, application for you. We will not change any essays, we will not change any um, supplemental information there, and we do hold to discretion what we will edit in your application simply because of the volume of applications we have. Okay, so make sure that you are absolutely sure everything you've submitted is correct before you, pre before you press submit. Okay, I'll answer about three more questions in here. Feel free to keep asking them as we go through. Okay, will a lack of community service hurt my application? So community service comes in a lot of different forms and does not necessarily mean that you volunteer at a soup kitchen every day. Um, that means that you are giving back to the communities that you are involved in, whether that means it's a church community, whether it is a, a school community, um, how are you giving back to those around you? That's really what we're looking for, uh, not necessarily your stereotypical community service volunteering. So in those portions of the application, just make sure that you are um, explaining to us how you do give back to those around you. Who is the Cook Foundation Education Advisor that we are supposed to enter? Okay, so that is specific to young scholars. Um, anybody who is not a young scholar, you will not have an education advisor yet, so you do not need to enter anything into that section. That is specific for young scholars who are involved in one of our programs already. So if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. You do not need to put anything in under Cook Foundation Education Advisor. If you have an advisor, like a college advisor or a teacher that you work closely with, that you would like them to review your application before you submit, there is a section where you can add an advisor on the Common App and they will, um, they will ask you, uh, they will be able to review your application as well. Okay. All right. What is the process for teacher recommender, recommenders to submit their recommendations? So what that looks like behind the scenes is um, you will enter in the teacher's email address, they will receive an email, and then um, you'll also receive a confirmation email that the email has been sent. So both of you will know that someone has requested a recommendation for you. The teacher will upload directly to the Common App you will not have an opportunity to see the recommendation and they will submit the application, they will submit the recommendation and you'll receive a notification when it has been submitted. So um, definitely make sure that you are keeping in contact with your recommender to make sure that they have, um, that they are working on your recommendation and are planning on submitting before November 13th. But you will also know when they have submitted it by you receiving an email. Okay, so this will be the last question that I'll answer for now. And then most of these questions I will um, export and send to those attendees afterwards. So don't feel like you um, need to submit all of your questions now. I will, um, I will be able to answer some later as well. Okay, so last question that I'll answer for you today. What is the exact scholarship amount awarded? Does it vary depending on your financial aid package? So again, this is what I talked about, about the scholarship being a last dollar scholarship. We award up to $40,000 per year, um, which is renewable for four years. You do need to submit your FAFSA application in order to be considered for your uh, college or university's financial aid package. What we'll do is we will use their financial aid package first, and then the, the Jack and Cook Foundation's college scholarship will come in 
as a last dollar scholarship to work to cover whatever remains in your cost of attendance. So that varies per person, per school, um, but up to $40,000 per year is what we will receive, we'll, what you will receive from us. Sometimes there are cases where students will, let's say, have a $60,000 a year um, tuition bill and the, for whatever reason, the financial aid office does not provide enough and then our award will go up to $40,000 per year, but there might be additional um, costs associated afterwards and those would be on the student. In that case, we would also recommend that you continue to apply to other scholarships as well, just in case there is an outside expense that can be matched, or I'm sorry, that can be paired up with the um, Cook College Scholarship. So we'll use all of your other scholarship application, all of your other scholarship um, money first, and then we will be the last dollar scholarship at that point. Okay, so definitely feel free to um, apply to other scholarships as well. Uh, if you have any questions about what other scholarships you might apply for, our website, we have a great resource list of other scholarships that you might be interested in. And again, keep in mind that this is a very competitive scholarship, so make sure that you um, don't necessarily put all of your eggs in one basket and that you reach out and apply to as many as you can to make sure that you are going to have the best opportunity for access in your college career. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, again, I will export the questions that you've asked. I will stay on for about five minutes to make sure that anybody else has an opportunity to add on more questions. And um, I will send out these questions afterwards with my answers. Okay, so thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. Good luck with your applications. Thanks.